Welcome back, Hive Mind. This is Shalazar with Hive Mind Gaming coming at you with another board game video. So we're today we're going to take a look at the Kickstarter for Zombie Side Undead or Alive. This is not going to be a playthrough. So if that's what you're looking for, sorry guys. Uh, keep an eye out. Hopefully they'll put it on Tabletop Simulator or something similar and do a playthrough. That would be great. But as of right now, they haven't done that yet. They haven't released it to the general public anyway. So it, what this video is going to be about is what are the differences between this and all the other zombie sides? Well, here's the thing. They've pulled a lot of cool ideas from all the other zombie sides and then made some new changes that are pretty exciting, to be honest. I was really hoping that one of the A-bombs, you know, because they always do special A-bombs, abominations. I'm really hoping that one of them is going to be a horse, you know, a dead horse because reasons, because another zombie side title. But anyway, all right, so well, let's move on. All right, so some of the things that, some of the things that's cool about this one is one, the theme. Theming is fantastic. I love it. I love the theme of zombie side, undead or alive. I'm a sucker for old school Westerns, spaghetti Westerns, watched them as a kid with my dad. It was one of his favorite pastimes, so it became a really fun thing to do with my pops. And since he's passed, it makes it even better. So this theme makes it even better. So uh, really nostalgic for me. Now, some of the cool things that they did, one was the train. So they do have a train. So it's a really cool effect in some scenarios. You have to jump on the train to get up, get out of town in time before the place is completely overrun by zombies. So, and these tracks here, they flip over to make the train. So as the train is coming, it flips over and makes the train longer and so on and so forth. So it's kind of neat, kind of neat. Uh, they did a really good job, I think, uh, of how the train actually works and how they implement it into the game. My guess, at some point, there's going to be an unlock where you get an actual train, a physical train to, to use. But I, I'm just guessing, I mean, longtime Simon uh, follower, so uh, definitely uh, see that in, in the future of this Kickstarter. Uh, one of the other things they did is they did update the dashboards. So the dashboard has the two weapons or two hand items off to the side. And then, of course, the uh, character dashboard or card goes he here on this on one side by itself. And then they had a really cool update, which is uh, something that I always complained about in in um, Zombie Side Black Plague and Green Horde is if I have a longbow, if a longbow could go in my special armor slot, but I find a magic longbow, I can't put the magic longbow in the spot of the longbow. Never, ever, 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 ever made sense to me. Well, they fixed that here. Each, each character card is going to have a either picture of either a gun, a rifle, a sword or a dagger or a picture of all three together. Now what that means is if they have the pistol, that means any pistol can go in this spot, whether it be a special, a special kind of pistol or just a regular old pistol. Same with the rifles, same with melee. The dagger means melee weapons. So whether it be an ax, a tomahawk, a dagger, a sword, it, does not matter it can go in the melee slot and then this one means that it doesn't matter what they want to put here they can put it here it does not matter they can put any weapon of choice in this location so i really like that upgrade to this game or to this version of zombie side i think it's pretty cool 
pretty cool. Uh, another thing, uh, I don't think this is specific to this zombie side. I think they did it in the 2.0 modern zombie side where the each each zombie card will show what zombies that card has. So it'd be walkers, runners, fatties, etc. And then the color dictates how many you get of that zombie side, zombie type. Because in old school Black Plague and in um, Green Horde, the colors dictated what kind of zombie you got. So it would just be a basic monster card and then it would have a picture if you're in blue you got walkers if you were in yellow you got runners if you were in orange you got fatties or whatever it was it was always jumbled up so you know sometimes you get runners on blue sometimes you get fatties on blue etc so i like this i like this you draw it you're getting runners with this card color dictates how many you're getting. I like that. I, I think it's really cool, really simple. I think it's a better way of keeping up with what you're getting and also how many cards of each type you have in your deck. I think that's very important because I don't know about the rest of you, but when you've got Green Horde and Black Plague and all the expansions, the deck is just too much so you have to break it down well the way the the way the uh zombie cards are designed in green horde and black plague it's really difficult to de figure out how many of each type of zombie you've got in the deck if they're all split up into different cards like that yeah it was it was kind of annoying i love the way this works uh, so I look forward to playing with that for sure. Uh, one of the other things that they did different was the equipment cards. Now, they, their equipment cards pretty much work exactly like all the other zombie sides, with the exception of their special, the special weapons. This would be like the vault cards, cards in the fantasy version. Cool thing is they call them bounty weapons. And so how it works is on the back of that card... It looks similar to this and it has a bounty on it and what that means is at the beginning of the game you shuffle all the bounty cards up and you put it in one deck and you and you set them off to the side now the top card each each one of these items has a bounty on the back and each one of them's different so how to get this rifle right here by the way the bounties are red that's how I know this is a bounty to get this rifle right here you have it, it has a bounty on the back of the card if it's the top card of the deck you, and you complete that bounty and the bounty could be anything like you know kill five zombies in one turn or kill you know kill 10 points worth of zombies in one turn with dynamite that kind of thing it could be lots of different lots of different uh things to to be a bounty if you do that you get to draw that card so if a player or a character fulfills the, the the bounty they get to draw that card then on top of that then there's also in each scenario there's ways to get bounty cards as well so it could just be you know go find go find the objective marker and when you find the objective marker you get one of the bounty cards I like it. I like it a lot. It, it adds it adds a lot more character to it. And, and most importantly, it's thematic. There's always bounties. There's always wanted posters. The biggest thing about, about the Old West is you always had the bad guy on the wanted poster that was being hunted down by the U.S. Marshal or, or the Sheriff or whatever, it, the posse. It's very cool and very thematic. I love it. I think it's very, very cool. All right. Some other things that is different is, if you notice, there's no Abomination here because the Abomination has its own deck. So now this is something we do. Uh, my my gaming group does with our 
uh, Zombie Side Invader and Zombie Side Black Plague and uh, and Zombie Side Green Horde. We separate the Abominations and the Necromancers. So what we do is we put six of each of those cards in the main deck: six Necromancers and six A bombs. You only have six basic Necromancers in the regular deck. And when you draw one, you draw a random necromancer from the necromancer deck. All right. Anyway, that's what my my uh, gaming group does. We've we've done that for a very long time. It helps. It helps because when we first played in Zombie Side and Fader, we got a bomb after a bomb after a bomb after a bomb, and it was just ridiculous. So we had to figure out something, and that was our compromise: create a separate deck for them and go on. Well, with that being said, it looks like that's exactly what they did here. So there are A-bombs in the actual deck, but when you get one, when you draw one, the A-bomb has its own spawn zone. So when you draw the A-bomb card, that spawn zone, which is a locked spawn zone, then flips over and becomes an active spawn zone. And it works exactly like any other spawn zone. Now the A-bomb... When it spawned, it spawns wherever it was drawn for. So let's say you have three spawn zones on the board that are active spawn zones, and then you've got the fourth Abon spawn zone that's inactive somewhere on the board, board dictated by the scenario. So let's say you draw your card for the first spawn zone, it's zombies, and then you draw your card for the second spawn zone, and it's an A-bomb, then at that point, you put the A-bomb on the second spawn zone and then activate his spawn zone. Yeah, and so now you have four spawn zones. Crazy, right? So really cool how that works. Another thing they did with spawn zones is one, the way you spawn zombie or the way you spawn things inside buildings. There are no more doors. Yay! And the peasants rejoice. <sighs> yeah, so cool. So basically what that means is soon as you walk into a building, as soon as you walk into a building, it activates a hidden spawn zone. Each tile is going to have a specific area like this right here and these and this right here, a specific area that is going to be designated as a spawn zone for that building. Soon as you walk into that building, you activate that spawn zone. No other zombies. They don't. They don't fill up the different rooms and things like that. Like, like old school zombie side. They just spawn a new spawn zone in that area, and that now becomes a spawn zone. All right. So here's the thing, guys. As soon as there are seven spawn zone on the board, game over, man. Game over. So you've got to make sure you kill these spawn zones. Now, this is how you kill the spawn zones. Inside the equipment deck, there's a new item, and that item is holy water. The, to kill the spawn zones for the buildings, you need holy water. Now, there's, a, there's another secret, another way to do it, but it has to do with the classes, and I'll get to that shortly. But there is a second way to use water instead of holy water but you have to be a specific class but anyway holy water will kill the spawn zones so that's one way to get rid of them and then of course killing the a-bomb when you kill the a-bomb his active spawn zone goes back inert and becomes inactive again so that's another way to get rid of a spawn zone so yeah really really cool i dig it a lot I dig it a lot. One thing that blows my mind about this game is that right there. 14 survivors in the base game. That's unheard of. I mean, yeah, I mean, a Simon a Simon Kickstarter, you, I mean, you're you're used to getting a metric butt ton of Characters. I mean, you just do it. I mean, it's a Simon game. I expect that there's going to be thirty plus, thirty plus heroes. Okay, cool. But in the base game, unheard of. Absolutely blows my mind. 
So with the with that idea, there are classes to this to this version of zombie side. Something new that hasn't been done in any other zombie side. Currently, there are four classes. There's the gunslingers. It's going to be denoted by the pistol. There is the brawler, going to be the red fist. There's the town folk. That's going to be the building. And then finally, it's the faithful, which is going to be the cross that is kind of at an angle. There you go. We'll say it that way. So those are the four classes. Now, what does the classes mean? So what that means is gunslingers have the ability to use pistols. Pistols have a special ability called fanning. And if you're a gunslinger, you can activate that ability. And what that means is you get more shots than listed on that's listed on the card, but less accuracy. So one less to hit and you generate more noise. So you got to be careful. Now, Brawler, on the other hand, has the ability to use a charge ability, which means that he can charge, which is move into combat and attack all at the same action. On top of that, Brawlers start with more wounds, more hit points. Then you've got the Faithful. The Faithful have the ability to stun a group of zombies in a single zone in line of sight. They stun them, they can't do anything, and the other thing that a faithful can do is they've got, there's water in the equipment deck. Just like all the other zombie sides, you've got the water that gives you plus one XP. Well, they can use water as holy water to get rid of spawn zones in buildings. Really cool. I love that ability. The town folk, though, the town folk are the shining, the shining beacon, man. They got two cool abilities. One, they get an extra search, which is awesome because searching is great in this game and important. Uh, and then their other ability is kind of neat. They use rifles. They're good with rifles and they get no distance penalties, range penalties while in buildings. Remember in all the other zombie sides, you when you're in a building, you can only shoot at the next room, no matter what range weapon you have, and you're and you can see five rooms down, it does not matter. You can only shoot into the next room. Town folk can shoot all the way the full length of their range of their weapon that they're holding. So that's pretty cool. Really cool abilities. And everyone will be, it will tell you on their card what class they are. So it's not going to be a situation where it's not going to say, well, this survivor is really cool. I want him to be a brawler. Now they're already on there. It tells you on the character card, whether they're a brawler, gunslinger, faithful or town folk. So you will already know that information when you choose your champion or survivor. Going back to the character card, especially. So if you see right here, it will show you the icon of what you, that, that survivor is. So for instance, Carl here is a brawler where Meg is a gunslinger. So, uh, just keep that in mind. That's how that works. Also going back here, something I forgot to mention, uh, this tells you what your starting items are. So in, in other uh, forms of zombie side, you could choose your starting, your starting equipment. Well, this one tells you dictates what you're going to start with. So there is a pistol starting weapon, a rifle starting weapon, a melee starting weapon. And that is what you get. By the way, the melee starting weapon is a frying pan, which is awesome. By the way, just, I mean, just stupid awesome. All right. So anyway, so those three things uh, dictate what you get. Now, if it's someone like this, then you get to choose out of those three what you want to start with. So that's basically how that works. Something else that they changed about the game, which is really cool, is the noise tokens. I can tell you from experience, my gaming group doesn't even use the noise tokens. We use noise, 
But unfortunately, we wait until it's an issue. Wait until there's a reason to worry about it. Like, you know, there's zombies coming and they could go one way or the other. One, we try not to split the party. Because, you know, splitting the party is always good. So we try not to do it. Um, but w on those times that uh, the party does get split and there's a situation where zombies can go one way or the other, then we try to figure out the noise right then and there. Sometimes uh, it gets kind of irritating because we don't use the noise tokens. But, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's one less, one less thing to have to worry about when we're playing a game that has so many components to it. When, I know, you're going to say, oh, come on, Shalazar, there's not that many components. But, you know, when you're in the middle of the game and you've got 40 or 50 zombies on the board, there's a lot of components on the board. So it, they, they get lost. Anyway, they've changed it. So now there's just a single token. It's called the bang and boom token. So anytime someone makes a noise, they get the token in the square that they made the noise. That is the most recent noise. So that's where the zombies go. They go toward the most recent sound that's made. Now, they still follow the same rules as they always have, which is they use sight first. So if they can see someone, they go toward who they can see. If they can't see anyone, they go toward the noise. And just like all other zombie sides, you've got to map out where they're going and then have them go that way. And that's important for runners or anything that moves multiple times. So keep that in mind. Next, there's the boom side of it. And all you do is you just flip the token over boom always is the loudest so even if someone makes noise after the boom the boom takes precedence because the boom is loud the two things currently that make a boom noise is one the dynamite which is this game this version's uh version of the maltov cocktail from modern or the or the dragon bile from from green horde black plague the other thing that makes a boom noise is the Gatling gun, which is this right here. So the Gatling gun is very similar to the catapult from Green Horde. So basically, it you've got to use a you've got to use an action to crawl inside of it uh, into the wagon because it's usually on the back of a wagon, which we'll get into the wagon in just a second. But you've got to crawl into the back of the wagon to get to the gun, the Gatling gun. And then for every action you take, you shoot, you roll three dice and you shoot with it. And you shoot at one er, one location. Every consecutive shot that you make with the Gatling gun or action that you make with the, with the Gatling gun, you roll an additional die. So now you shoot at one group of zombies, you roll three dice there's still zombies there. So you shoot at them again. Now you're rolling four dice. So now you're going to shoot at another set of zombies because you killed everything there. Now you shoot at another set of zombies. Now you're rolling five dice. So you're constantly, you're con consecutive shooting. You get an extra dice for each one. So pretty darn cool. I really like how the Gatling gun works. Now the cart is the part that works very similar to the catapult in Green Horde. It's kind of like they took the catapult and split it in half and made the gun part and then the cart part. It takes all three actions of one character. One character can use all three of their actions to move to one zone, one zone away. So kind of neat. I really dig it. I think it's, I think it's really cool. So, um, Let's see. One other thing about the dash, the plastic dashboards is the backpack. There's only three slots for the backpack. So just keep that in mind. So when you're trying to figure out what you're going to keep, the cool thing is, is they got them lined up this way so you can actually see what's in your backpack. Unlike Green Horde, where they're off, you know, they're off to the side, but they're lined up. You can't really see. You've got to 
you know, thumb through them to see what you've got in your backpack. In this, you can only have three, but you know exactly what's in it because you see it right in front of you. So really cool. I really dig that, that part of it. All right. So the last thing I want to go over that has to do with what's different between this version of Zombie Side and the others is some of the new skills. Now, some of the new skills, they're pretty much just designed to follow through with the theming of this Zombie Side and also to go along with some of the class abilities. For instance, there's a plus one charge per turn uh, skill, which basically allows you to charge more than just your one time if you're a brawler. So brawlers give you the ability to charge. That's their class ability. So if you have this skill, then that means you can do it twice a turn. So they also have that same skill for Fanny, which is the gunslinger's ability. And also for, for Vade Retro, which is the ability for the faithful. So all three of those, the Gunslinger, the Faithful, and the Brawler all have active skills. So they all get an extra time to do it because they can only do it once per turn current when they first start. And then if they have that skill, then they get an additional time that they can use it. Now, the... The townsfolk don't because both of their abilities that they get as a townsfolk are both passive abilities. They just always get them. All right. Then there is plus one free, free charge. So basically they have that for, again, charge, fanning, and uh, vede retro. I don't even know if I'm saying that correct. It's, <laughs> but anyway, the faithful ability. And you get it once as a free action. That means you still can only do it once per turn, but now you could do it for free. It doesn't take up one of your three actions, assuming that was your blue ability, right? But anyway, so you don't have to spend an action to actually use that ability. You can now just do it once per turn for free. So kind of neat. I dig it. I think it's uh, very interesting. Uh, that they threw that in as a skill. Next, we've got plus one free re uh, reload. So a lot of the weapons have a reload property, which is, you know, completely separate and based on the the weapon. So basically, this skill allows you to you to reload for free once per turn. All right, then we've got a skill called Brawler, one called Faithful, one called Gunslinger and one called town folk. Now those skills basically mean that you're considered one of those plus whatever class you're already on your card. So for instance, let's take a look at Carl right here. He's a brawler. So let's say his, uh, it's not, I'm just saying what if it was, if his blue ability was, let's say town folk, then that means he's considered a town folk and a brawler. So he gets both special abilities for both classes. That is really cool. Really, really cool. And it, but it makes sense, right? It makes sense that someone could be a town folk, you know, a, a member of the clergy. I don't know. Lots of cool, lots of cool concepts when it comes to that. But I think that that was a, that's a cool skill that they added to this game. So the next few skills are just like the ones before it, it, applies to charge fanning and vade retro which is going to be plus one damage while doing one of those while doing one of those uh, three actions and then one is plus one to dice roll while doing those actions plus one to the die so you get one extra die when when doing those actions um, now when it comes to the vade retro what that means is if you have that ability, like if you have Vade Retro plus one die, that means if you're attacking any zombies inside a zone that you stunned with your with your ability, you get the plus one die. So that's the difference between, you know, the brawler charge. You just get a plus one when you charge something. Well, if you use the uh, Vade Retro ability 
and then you have the Vade Retro plus one die, then you stun them with that ability and then attack them, then you get the plus one die w at, while you're attacking. So kind of neat. I, I dig it. I dig it. Uh, there's the uh, plus one zone. So you can charge an extra zone away. You can fan uh, as in shoot an extra zone away. So if your pistol is only a zero to one, it now becomes a zero to two when you're fanning. Um, and then of course your body retro, uh, you can target a zone further away. So, uh, kind of neat. Uh, I dig it. Um, now you're, uh, then you've got the Reaper ability. So keep in mind, guys, all of these are pretty much skills that are in other games in the other versions of zombie side this is just strictly skills that are in addition because they have the plus one die combat plus one you know to die rolls in combat the reaper skill for combat they have those but then they have the skills that are specifically dedicated to the class skills which kind of sucks right it kind of sucks like i could have reaper which means all my attacks have reaper or i could just have brawling reaper which means that i use my charge ability as a brawler i get my reaper and kill an extra zombie and now my regular attacks are just regular attacks but uh, i'm pretty boring so yeah i would much rather have just reaper that way I charge in, kill something. Oh, I killed something, so I get an extra zombie because I reaped him. And then my next attack is just a regular attack, but I killed a zombie, so I get an extra one because of Reaper, etc. So, I, it's, I, I mean, I don't know, guys. I don't know. I mean, tell me in the comments what you guys think, but I think it's as cool it is that that you that the the skills are based off of your your class, it kind of actually hinders them. It's like not as good of a skill as just having the Reaper skill in general or the plus one damage skill in general or the plus one die skill in general. So, yeah, so, so that, I mean, as much as I want to like it, I just, it's, it's aggravating. It really is aggravating. So anyway, so they have the plus one, the, or the Reaper, for those three, then they have the reroll, which is, I guess that's kind of cool. I don't think they have that in the regular skills. And basically what that means is if you're using the charge ability, the fanning or the Vade retro, you get to reroll all the dice. Now keep in mind, that's all the dice. You, you can't just choose one or two to reroll. You got to reroll them all or none. So just keep that in mind when you're when you're deciding if you're going to reroll. So, but that is kind of a cool cool uh, thing. Uh, then you've got combat reflexes, which is new uh, to me anyway. I don't remember seeing this one before. Uh, basically, what that does it gives you a free action to attack any zombie that spawn in line of sight and in range of the survivor. Uh, and you can do this once per zombie card spawn. So if there's a situation where there's multiple spawn zones in the same area, um, I'm not sure if you would run into that in this game, but I know in Black Plague, you could, because of necromancers, you could literally have three or four spawn zones all in the exact same spot. So if you had something like combat reflexes and you had a shotgun or a rifle and you were a zone or two away, you could literally fire it every time something spawned in, in that zone. So, which is kind of nuts, kind of nuts, uh, really cool ability. So you've got uh, dual expert is the next one. And then basically what it is, is you get a free combat action while dual wielding weapons. So if you've got two pistols and you're firing them, you get one uh, free action uh, to fire them every turn if you've got two of them and uh, blazing away. Uh, the next one is Escalation, and it basically makes the survivor work like the Gatling gun. So basically when they attack, 
they take the attack action. For every attack action they take after that one, they get an additional die. So they're, they, they escalate, kind of like the skill says. So they're constantly escalating. But it has to be the exact same thing. So in other words, if you shoot uh, with your pistol, you have to shoot with your pistol again and shoot with your pistol again to constantly get the, the upgrade. You can't shoot with your pistol, stab someone in the face and shoot with your pistol. Actually, it'd probably be the other way around. Stab the zombie that's in your zone and then shoot the zombie that's one thing away from you because you cleared out the zombies in your zone. So you can't do that and get your escalation. You've got to you've got to stab, stab, stab. You got to get very stabby on them to uh, get the escalation. But cool concept for a skill. Uh, then you've got explosives expert, which uh, intrigued me when I first seen the name. And basically, what that is is you uh, every time you use dynamite, you roll a die, and if you roll, uh, I think it's a six. If you roll a six, then uh, the dynamite goes back into your backpack instead of being discarded. So uh, kind of a cool ability. Uh, then you've got uh, medic. And basically medic is... A, actually, I really like the medic skill. Uh, basically, at the end of every turn, you and every survivor in your zone heals one wound. That's it. I mean... Pretty simple and straightforward. Everyone heals a turn, heals a wound. Uh, and then lastly, we've got quick draw. And this is similar to the to the uh, spell one from Zombie Side Black Plague, where anything in your backpack is considered to be equipped. Uh, really cool ability, actually. Uh, I really like it. So, other than that. I mean, that's pretty much the major things that are different between the two sets uh, or genres. If I missed anything, put it in the comments, guys. Not infallible. I know I'll make mistakes. It's okay. I'll admit it. I've got a wife, so she makes me admit it a lot. So it's fine. But anyway, just let me know in the comments, guys. Um, I'm really looking forward to this. Currently, we've got several, several survivors unlocked. We've got one Station Master Walker. Uh, basically what they're doing, they're releasing one bad guy per uh, per day at high noon. Uh, my guess is they're going to do something very similar like they did in 2.0 Zombie Side, where they release a different walker every single day. Uh, they're going to be fatties, they're going to be walkers and, and runners, and it's going to be a whole slew of them. Uh, just going to be extra walker sculpts, which or extra zombie sculpts, which is fantastic. And I, I loved that they did that in uh, modern 2.0. So I really hope that that's exactly what they're doing here. And it looks like that's what they're doing here. So uh, really excited about that. Cause I mean, look at this guy. I mean, he's just <laughs> station master. He's holding the lantern. Very cool. Very cool. So, but yeah, so uh, quite a few uh, survivors already unlocked for the for the um, Kickstarter. Uh, when it comes to the classes, it said that there was four classes. Well, in the rule book, it says, "Don't worry, there will be more unlocked through expansions." So, as usual with Simon, uh, or come on, coming, coming. Come on, come on. I don't know how the hell ever you pronounce their name. Uh, <laughs> as usual, there's going to be expansions that you can buy for real money. So uh, keep that in mind. I'm sure there's probably going to be three or four. I'll probably do another video uh, somewhere at, toward the end of the, the Kickstarter and go over all those as well so that we can uh, take a look at what what we're in store for when we're playing uh, this version of Zombie Side. So, and hopefully they'll open up the tabletop simulator uh, so we can actually give this a try and play it, play through it, and see what see how it uh, plays and runs through. So, but other than that, guys, if you like what you've seen and you want to see more, hit the like button and join the hive by hitting the subscribe button. We'll see you on a video soon. Bye bye.